What will be the response of AstraZeneca to the second offer by Pfizer? Uh, yeah, good morning. Um, yeah, we, we'll see. It's going to be very interesting to see what Astra uh, will say about that. Obviously, in the short term, they have declining sales growth. They have a very promising oncology pipeline with one of the most exciting targets, and that's the reason why Pfizer is so, so interested by um, buying uh, AstraZeneca together with more efficient tax structure. Uh, deal. Uh, our Phil Serafino writing out of Paris really made note of the lack of revenue growth. Let me be blunt, and I'm using an American phrase here. Are these dinosaurs mating? Yeah, um, I mean, it's uh, AstraZeneca is, is 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 very interesting, and and uh, I mean, both in the short term, this company have declining sales growth. Um, so, in a way, that doesn't make so attractive as a uh, first view. But obviously, what you want is growth and and good prospect going forward. And uh, Pfizer, his um, uh, company that had make a lot of acquisition and. Um, also gave some return, good returns to show orders. We are also joined right now uh, from Geneva by our own uh, Phil Serafino, who wrote the article uh, that you can read on Bloomberg.com. Phil, I want to ask you, there were originally some negotiations in January. They fell apart. Now, all of a sudden, it's April, May, and it's back on the table. What changed over the course of the four months? You know, that's hard to figure out at this point. Um, Pfizer, it seemed like, had walked away. And I think what happened was uh, when word leaked of that approach last week, AstraZeneca's stock went up. It may have been that Pfizer liked the feedback that it got from investors or saw how the stock market reacted and thought this was the time to come back. Certainly investors, uh, you know, are warming to the idea of a deal at, you know, north of 46, 50 pounds, something like that. It's unclear what it would take to get the deal done. But Pfizer must have seen that it had an opportunity here. Phil, this is a, a massive number, $100 billion potentially. It's like going out and paying cash for all of Boeing or all of McDonald's. Do we have a sense for uh, how Pfizer intends to pay for this? Well, one thing they said is they're going to pay with both cash and stock. Um, uh, and, and they're going to... They're going to uh, headquarter the combined company in the UK, which would bring tax benefits to them. It's unclear how the U.S. government would react to that. Um, but Pfizer mm. has a ton of cash sitting overseas, so they can use that cash, they can use stock, and then they can argue, look, we're going to get tremendous tax benefits from this deal down the road. It'll be one of those situations, like we've seen many times, where the, headquarter, the, com the company officially will be based in the U.K., but the, the actual headquarters will continue to be in New York, according oh, dear to Pfizer. Ron, Chris, give us the last word here from Geneva. When we looked this morning at another pharmaceutical deal. What does it say about the entire industry? What's the why here? Why are we seeing 200 billion plus in potential mergers? I mean, what we see is that the company w wants to bolster their um, business in which uh, they, they see they really have an attractive business model and they want to exit weaker businesses. So it's exactly what mm -hmm. we have seen with Novartis and Glaxo and Lilly, what we see potentially with Bayer, um, uh, etc. So. Right. Uh, well, let's leave it there. Odile Runkers, thank you so much with Helvia out of Geneva, and thanks to our Philip Cervino uh, reporting from our Paris News Bureau.